Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. We have an all pundit show with Alexander Marks, Mary Lau, and Russell Rowe. It's all coming up next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over one in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon, a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails, featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere. The Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us, located at the corner of 5th and Carson. We'll save you a drink. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. When in Carson City, Nevada Newsmakers records in the conference room at the Bank Saloon. Coverage of the 2021 Nevada Legislative Session is brought to you by Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Ahern Rentals is ready for your next project. Liberty Dental Plan, making members shine one smile at a time. And Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. I'm back on Nevada Newsmakers, coming to you from Carson City. We're taping this on the morning of Wednesday, May 26th, five days before the end of session. And we have a great Power Pundit panel here. Alexander Marks is here, the Nevada State Education Association political coordinator. Mary Lau is president and CEO of the Retail Association of Nevada. And Russell Rowe is managing principal of the Rowe Law Group. Pleasure to have you all here. Thanks for having us. All Thanks, right, Sam. so Alexander, yes. um, half a billion dollars already towards education. Yep. Discussion about the mining tax, which we'll try to get into <laughs> later and nobody will want to talk about. Um, promises to have more money coming to education. How good do you feel about this? So we are very excited and we certainly laud the $500 million. Um, it's a good investment. Um, unfortunately, yesterday we kind of found that it might just be more of a maintenance uh, cost because, because. because the 2019 numbers uh, for the per pupil amount are actually $115 less in 2021 when you compare the two. Uh, so certainly an investment or for maintenance, but it didn't get us to where we need to be. Uh, the Commission on School Funding made certain recommendations based on where we need to be for either optimal or adequate funding. The numbers we're seeing from this legislative session are not going to get us to where we need to be. I mean, we're talking like $2 billion a year over the next 10 years. Uh, so hopefully we'll get into the mining discussion because that's where we believe would be a good start to help get us there. Uh, 500 million is great. That's you know an economic outlook, but it's not necessarily new revenue. It's just monies that we have based on a good economic outlook, and uh, the American Rescue Plan money is certainly going to be helpful in those efforts. But it kind of just got us back to even. Uh, so certainly that's that's good. It, you know, if you'd have told us a year ago we'd be back to even after everything we went through, we probably wouldn't have believed you. So it's good that we're back to even. But it's where do we go from here? And it doesn't really seem like this session is going to give us that path forward that we need. Uh, Mary, your thoughts on this? Well, I'm trying to figure out. Alex, are you saying that the uh, capital improvement projects are included in that 500 million? Because is, is that where we're going with this? Is it's not all teachers' salaries? 
it's not all classroom stuff. It's also maintenance and repairs because our, our budgets are, you know, so different than other states. And the peer pupil spending sometimes doesn't include <clears throat> capital improvements in Nevada. So I was trying to figure out what Alex was saying because he knows that we have supported education for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, uh, we don't have a problem with increasing funding in education. We just need to know where it's going. Brian's testified in favor of it in the building. So what's your response, Alex? I think it is all encompassing, especially with the uh, ARP funds. I mean, there, there's a, a litany of things that those can be used for. Um, certainly it's not just going to teacher salaries or educator salaries. Um, certainly that's always a, a consideration when you do increase per pupil because that's what those funds are inevitably used for with you know collective bargaining and, and all the things. But certainly um, I'd have to look into the actual capital improvement programs that were implemented in those, the specific funds. But I mean, it's it's not just for raises. It's for you know uh, early literacy programs. It's it's a host of things that obviously the the per pupil amount goes for, so that we can help educate our kid, which is you know from HVAC system improvements to summer schools to you know loss of opportunities and things like that that we experienced over the last year. Um, what's go ahead, May. I was going to say I think there's more money coming for opportunity funds too, though. Would you agree that there's more money coming from opportunity funds? I'm not, I, I'm not 100% sure if there is more money coming from opportunity funds. So, so what's gaming's position on this? Well, it's, it, look, I think Alex's earlier point that, that we're a year ago today, we thought we were going to be in a lot different position than we are today. So obviously getting 500 million back in there and Alex is really smooth in how he explains that almost like a rounding error but, but but I think we're all happy that that we're at least to his his point back to where we should have been a year ago um, so that's that's certainly very positive um, how that impacts how we move forward um, and certainly conversations around tax increases um, I, I think is really what the question is I mean there's a bill out there on um, short-term rentals, right? Trying to regulate short-term rentals and making sure they pay their fair share of, of, of room taxes, which many many don't. As I understand, is another 40 to 50 million uh, of of that's not even a tax increase. It's just making right. sure folks are actually paying what they're supposed to be paying. Um, so there's opportunities um, at, before the end of this session to help education without necessarily having a huge tax increase. That's a bill we support. Um, I don't have the specific bill number, but we certainly support that one. AB 360. There we go. See, uh, we would, we support that. I mean, I think there's another bill that we also supported earlier in session, which wasn't necessarily a new tax, which would have been uh, Senate Bill 346, which would have created parity between digital sales goods and goods that, like, if you were to go to buy a book in a bookstore, I, I think that still exists, bookstores. Uh, but if you were to buy a book, you'd get a sales tax on top of that. But if you buy it from a digital library, you don't get that same sales tax. Uh, so it's stuff like that, that there, there are available revenue packages we can do without necessarily creating new taxes. Uh, we certainly do support a couple new taxes when it comes to mining, but there are things like Russell saying that we could be doing now that would put us on a better path to capture money that is out there that's just not getting captured. All right, so you're the only person that's been on the show in the last three months that has been willing to uh, talk about the discussions that are going on. Uh, yeah. With mining and uh, and the potential ramifications for gaming, um, as far as ballot issues that are coming up uh, in the next cycle. So, what can you share with us without uh, being taken out by the CIA? Yeah, exactly. I'm the, the black sheep <laughs> of Nevada newsmakers. Uh, so, we have been pushing Assembly Joint Resolution One. Uh, we've been doing this since the 32nd special session, which would uh, change the 5% net to 7.75% uh, gross revenue for mining. Uh, mining, I think, from our perspective, is just one of these industries that has not necessarily paid its fair share over the years. This is where a lot of money could come from to help, you know, whether it's public education or health care. Uh, and that's where our, our stance is, let this go to the ballot. If the people want to vote for that, let them vote for it. If they vote it down, you gave them the opportunity, you know, from our perspective of we support expanding voting rights and in every, you know, corner of the state. But let's give our folks something to vote for that our folks have been talking about for almost a year now. That's our perspective on the AJR1. So we'd like to see that get a hearing. So far, it hasn't uh, any day now. 
because uh, we're running out of them. But we hope that does get a hearing because there's a lot of groups like NSCA and Plan and Battleborn Progress, and this is where our membership is at. This is where they believe that revenue could come from, because I believe it would generate about $480 million a year. That could put us on the path to the funding commission's recommendations to get us to just adequate funding. But short of that, we're not really sure where they think the money is going to come from in terms of immediate revenue that we could have. That's the biggest pot we have. So that's why we're supporting that one. Okay. And you don't believe that uh, a deal can be cut in the next five days? I believe a deal could be, but it depends on what the numbers are. If I mean, obviously 480 is a high ceiling because that's why we're pushing that. That's the largest pot. If we could get something that is reasonable, that's immediate, that's long term, that is true reform for what we're seeking. I, I mean, obviously it's politics. You're never gonna get 100% of what you want, but we would certainly consider that. And if the right parties were in agreement and that would get us to where we need to on the path to adequate funding in public education and fund some other essential services like healthcare, we'd be all for that, I believe. Uh, Mary, your thoughts on this and where it sits five days out? Well, both of these guys are absolutely right. Um, the rental issue is a revenue producer. The digital good tax is a revenue producer. And it was understated by LCB what could come in because they understated Dina's, Dina's bill in 2019 and it came in and double, double digit millions of dollars and it came in at triple digit. And this one is a loophole that needs to be fixed too, but it's caught up in political games as opposed to policy. And um, <clears throat> we're a little concerned watching the mining tax issue because we don't really care what they do to solve it, except now they're creating possibility a whole new line of taxes that's going to trap everybody in the future. And I mean, I didn't have gray hair when I first talked about this stuff is we need to get together and determine a long term tax strategy in this state. Every year we look for a different ox and they're getting so many gourd and so many you know, just scars now that we really can't tell if we're on foot or horseback. There's inequities that aren't being straightened out, the rental issue, digital goods issue and everything else, which they could put it all into education if they needed to, or they can put it in their own CIP and give education a break. I mean, education's part of our general fund so they need to increase that and then increase the price for everybody. Going to the ballot is so difficult to try to explain and so difficult to try to, to, to do it properly. And this threatening procedure that says we're going to take you to the ballot and tax you is not a good long-term strategy either. Russell? 100% oh, agree, I mean, especially when you're taking industry specific taxes to the ballot. I mean, it's just not a good precedent for Nevada. Um, we need to get away from going to the ballot and rather than and instead work through our legislative process and, and we need to quit targeting specific indus industries and threatening them. Um, and it but that's together, always been more, the way, right? That's always, well, it's not always been the way. I mean, we did, uh, I, think, I, I think all the parties came together several sessions ago on, on the commerce tax, whether folks like it or not, it's broad-based tax that um, brought in additional revenue a lot and really impact a lot of out-of-state companies doing business in Nevada. Um, I think we need to look at those kind of solutions, look at um, how we abate our property taxes in the state. I mean, that's a significant amount of, of revenue that ironically just about equals the, the deficit and how you look at, at education in Nevada. Um, and that's where everybody businesses and individuals fairly participate in funding education, which we all have a part in. Uh, Mary, your thoughts on, on the commerce tax portion of that? Well, the commerce tax was a difficult tax. It was negotiated with a threat. I mean, that, that we have to admit to and stuff. But once it was settled and the MBT was settled, it, it doesn't need to be messed with again. And that's probably part of what's going on with the, the mining issue is they're creating another new idea, which will eventually filter down to every business in the state, gaming included, small business included, a license fee thing. So 
we have to start being intelligent. We have to plan strategically, and we also have to take into the consideration what our economy actually is. So, uh -huh. I mean, not only do we have scarred up oxes, but we have dead horses that we're still beating. Yeah, um, and to be clear, I'm not saying we it, it go after the commerce tax. So right. It was just used as an example of a of more of a broad-based approach. Right. Sure. Um, uh, from a legal perspective, uh, taking these initiatives off the ballot, I mean, how difficult is that going to be if agreement is reached uh, during the session? Uh, we, it, actually, I don't think it's going to be difficult at all. Um, really? There was that legislation passed a couple sessions ago that, that um, allows the, the maker or creator of a ballot measure to remove it and withdraw it. I'm, to my knowledge, if I recall correctly, I don't think that's been used yet. This may be the, the first time, but it's happened before. It happened before that legislation was actually adopted uh, back when I think it was um, uh, one of the gaming companies was trying to move a sales tax in the resort corridor to fund a, an arena at that gaming properties, <laughs> um, one of their establishments, and, and it was opposed, it was, and it was a ballot measure. And then I think it was Sec Secretary of State Ross Miller removed it from the ballot once there was an agreement not to move forward. Um, and then the subsequent legislation came um, providing the, the creator of a, of a ballot measure to withdraw it. So, it's possible, and since it's never really been used to my knowledge, um, there's really no precedent, so it should be a lot of leeway to do so. You agree, Alex? No, I, I take a more conservative approach. I, I, I'm going to talk to him afterwards about the law, um, but <laughs> from my research, I haven't found any, I mean, I haven't found a case where it's been used. Um, so, you know, to me, after that 40th day, that belongs to the people. I don't think there is a sponsor anymore. So they didn't take action on it. And because they didn't take action, they being the legislature, um, if they could do that, I think that would be certainly bad public policy. They could just wait till that 41st day, then pass their own law within the House and say it's gone if they didn't like it. So I'm, I think it's, it'll be a fun case of first impression. I just don't, I don't like that being used as a bargaining chip. I don't think that's, you know, in terms of what Russell's talking about, about people coming to the table to coalesce around an issue and do what's best for our state. I don't think a ballot initiative as a bargaining chip for session is probably the best approach. Um, I got them to the table, I suppose, but uh, I just that what they are, though. What's that's, that? Isn't that what they're being used for as a bargaining chip? But it should as a bargaining chip for the voters to vote on something that you have gotten Nevada signatures of, on. Um, if the legislature doesn't want to deal with that, that's fine. The next step is it goes to the ballot for Nevadans to vote on. And you know, I mean, if they don't like that ballot initiative, they could have dealt with it. They didn't. Uh, you know, that's not saying I agree with the ballot initiatives at all or, you know, yes or no, or we're going to or not, but just in terms of what they exist to do and why they're there as an option for the people, I don't think it would be a proper move to remove them from the ability for people to vote for them. Okay, Mary, so two clear sides here. Which side do you <laughs> fall on? Well, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually fall on both. How's that one? The old ratio. Uh, come on, pick one. They're both my friends and I stay with my friends. <laughs> Alex is absolutely right. It belongs to the people now. But in the 90s, I think it may have been 95, Russell, you can correct me. Um, there was a teacher's initiative that had passed one time, a constitutional change. And an agreement was made in between the, second, the, the, the first vote and the second vote where the teachers actually agreed to work against their own initiative. And when everybody got together, all businesses, gaming, mining, retail association, because we were at the table then too, and stuff, we came up with the business license tax at the time. The business activities tax died, but the BLT stayed and was replaced later by the MBT. But in the meantime, uh, the teachers kept their word, campaigned against the ballot initiative, and helped educate people and fund it and to say this is not needed anymore. I think this would be a real easy one to campaign against now because we know that gaming is limping. They're going to come back quickly, but that's not the point. The point is that everybody's been hurt right now. It's not a good time to have this on the ballot, but I'm not convinced you can legally pull it off. All right, let's take a break. We'll come right back on this topic after this timeout. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. 
I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Located in the heart of Carson City, the Bank Saloon, a historic watering hole with a modern feel. With a variety of classic cocktails, featuring Nevada spirits, space for private events, conferences, and an incredible atmosphere. The Bank Saloon offers a great location to work and play. Come visit us, located at the corner of 5th and Carson. We'll save you a drink. Serving Our Kids Foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at-risk, and food insecure children in grades K through 8 throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic, Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served, providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Alexander Marks, Mary Lau, and Russell Rowe. Um, so uh, looks like there's going to be expansion of the live entertainment tax. Yeah. So more money coming in from that. Yeah, I think that goes back to our earlier conversation of are these existing revenue streams? Do we have to raise any new revenue in terms of taxation? You know, I think we, we spoke, I think we spoke on neutral in the bill just because we hadn't had a chance to read the amendment at that point. It was early on, but uh, we had supported that because again, it's, it's more revenue and more revenue to the jar, larger pot gets to education at some point. So more money to education is always something we're going to support. Uh, Mary, this is going to expand uh, the tax to things like Burning Man. Are you okay with that? I think it was only the Burning Man that got affected by it by the time everything happened. But yeah, that's another example of a loophole. It was never intended that Burning Man could turn around and make their tickets $25, but a reservation fee $2,500. Now, I'm not sure that I feel sorry for people that can pay $15,000 for a seat at the Raiders, but they can't afford the sales tax, so that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but um, the Burning Man was somebody found a clever loophole, so they used it. And um, I'm in Northern Nevada, I support the burn, but that was a little bit brutal the way they quote unquote interpreted it. All right, we'll come back and we'll get a, a last hear, word here from Russell right after this timeout. Tamarack Casino is giving away two Mercedes-Benz during the $125,000 Benz or Cash Giveaways. Plus, players get five times points on video reels every Friday. Win two Mercedes-Benz, now through May, at Tamarack Casino. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, Retail supports our communities in countless ways. 
jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Tamarack Casino is giving away two Mercedes-Benz during the $125,000 Benz or Cash Giveaways. Plus, players get five times points on video reels every Friday. Win two Mercedes-Benz now through May at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers with our remaining minute here on the program with Alexander Marks, Mary Lau, and Russell Rowe. Um, best thing about this session, Alexander? Uh, from our, our perspective, I think we did a really great job for our education support professionals, um, working with the governor's office and fantastic people over there like Heather Korbulik. Uh We got them eligible for unemployment insurance for the first time ever. Um, historically, they are just not able to get unemployment insurance, but due to the pandemic and limited jobs that they're going to have this summer, these are folks that need that option and that benefit, and we were able to get a good fix for them for a few months this summer. Russell, best thing? not having to come up until April and getting to enjoy beautiful Carson City in the spring. <laughs> Mary, you get the last word. Not being in the building from day one to day <laughs> 120. <laughs> and that's where we have to leave it. Thank you all very much. A great discussion. Really appreciate Thank it. You. And we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada is a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers on television, radio, audio and video, podcasts, and YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast coming to you from Carson City. See you then.